Uh, the first public hearing regarding the 2017-2018 tentative budget is called to order. The final hearing to adopt the budget will be held in this same room on September 6, 2017 at 5.05 p.m. And for the public's information on that, that's a statutory issue that requires certain times and everything on this. And it's also coordinated with all of the various other municipalities and other governmental agencies that have to go through their budget adoption. The board's agenda for this meeting includes a proposed millage levies um, uh, to listen to the public regarding the superintendent's proposed millage rates, tentative budget, uh, agenda item B1, and then the tentative budget for fiscal year 2018, agenda item B2. The school board may and will amend the tentative budget prior to the public hearing in uh, September. Dr. Vosa. And we have one speaker on the budget, Mr. Katz. Thank you. Um, again, Justin Katz, President of Palm Beach County CTA. Um, I, I wanted to come here today, today to make clear that, you know, after reviewing the, the budget that, uh, and I know it's, you know, it's tentative at this point in time and things change, but the, the position of most teachers, if not all teachers, and I would imagine the, the entire union is that, you know, we've sat by and we've seen kind of woefully inadequate allocations for raises for, for as long as I've been in the classroom for over the past decade. Um, the excuse, and it's a valid one to some degree, that you know the state regularly basically screws the district over. They, they do it to every district. Um, they don't care about us. They really don't. I don't think there's anyone that, that questions that, but the fact is that if there's anyone who thinks that's gonna change anytime soon, you know, I'd love for them to tell me when and how and you know, so they can convince me that things are gonna get better. So the, the constant excuse that the state is, is kind of handcuffing us Again, it might be valid to an extent, but it, it can't be one that is constantly leaned on as the reason why we can't properly compensate our employees. I think that it's important to recognize that the decision to pay employees a dignified salary and the willingness to provide a top-notch education to our students can occur simultaneously. It just will require tough decisions. Um, you know, you have to go through the budget, and I know everyone always says that you know the fat has been cut, but it's the government, it's a multi-billion dollar budget, there's more fat, I can guarantee that. It's tough fat to cut, it's close to the bone. Politically, it might be unsavory, no matter what you cut from a budget, somebody is gonna come in and tell you that you're ruining their lives or you're ruining this or that. But again, the, the problem is, moving forward, is that it's becoming tougher and tougher every year to sell to the members of the union, as well as the non-members that that these raises are what we have to accept and it's the only way. Um, you know, a wise man recently said that the improvements of our students is on the back of our teachers. Um, he also said that it's a shame that teachers work for over a decade and can't even crack $50,000 on the pay scale. I think that we've gotten to a point where tough decisions have to be made. The status quo can't stand because it's going to boil over and it's going to result in, you know, in a, a dispute that can't be resolved. Everyone keeps asking, there's newspaper reports and TV reports, why are teachers leaving? Why aren't we able to hire more teachers? There are a lot of reasons in that. I wouldn't assess it as one particular, but the bottom line is teachers don't work to make a lot of money, but everyone works to make money. And at some point you make the decision that it cannot support your way of life, your family. So it's just, I think that it's been long enough, like I said. I graduated college in 07, got hired, and a year later the economy crashed. And for the entirety of my career, and anyone hired after my time, we haven't seen any daylight. And it's tough decisions, like I said, but I think it's time to, to face them and acknowledge that you can compensate your employees in a dignified manner and provide a high quality education. It is not one or the other, it has to be both. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, Dr. Vosa. 
Board members, before you have two agenda items, I'm recommending for the millage levies and 2017-2018 tentative budget. These items are brought forward to comply with TRIM, which is called Truth in Millage Legislation. Before I make any recommend, before I make my recommendations, Mr. Burke will present the millage rates and the proposed budget. Yes, good Mr. evening. Burke. Uh, first, for the public, I'd just like to point out this is not our, our first meeting on the budget, as the board well knows. We've been working with your budget advisory committee uh, since November, and we've had several workshops along the way. Uh, tonight's public hearing is to get the board approval on the millage rates and the tentative FY18 budget. And I want to just explain for the public, while we're coming to the board for approval of the millage rates, uh, your authority is really limited. Your role in this process is, is really not what people may expect it to be. Uh, the legislature, actually the legislature's leadership and the governor uh, has set your millage rates for you. Uh, they set the required local effort, which is the bulk of our operating millage. And then the other components, such as capital improvement and discretionary, are capped by statute. So the board does not enjoy the flexibility of saying, we want to raise the millage rate and you know provide more funding for, for X, Y, or Z. Uh, and I think it's important to note that the, the budget we have received is an austere budget, right, with a lot of strings attached that we now must adopt and raise as our own, like we always do. Uh, but what's disappointing is that our state economy has demonstrated slow, steady economic growth of roughly 4% per year. And you may recall last year when I was here, we were faced with a state budget that provided a, across the state on average a 1% per student increase in student funding. This year, we're at 1.39%. Um, you know, we've worked hard to do better than that when we come to the negotiating table, but it is getting more challenging each year. Uh, this chart in front of you just takes you back a little bit. So this was our 10-year kind of wild ride with the property values in Palm Beach County, where we were at 170 uh, billion, and then we had a steep drop over a few years with the Great Recession. And now we've actually surpassed where we were. We're up to 190 billion, uh, and hopefully that continues to climb as it's projected to. Uh, but also throughout this ride, we suffered some millage setbacks. And we didn't uh, have a windfall of cash coming in as our tax values uh, continue to rise in the county. So when you look at our millage rate, and this is a very telling table, uh, but when you see like from FY17 to FY18, you're seeing the Palm Beach County gross taxable value grow by 6.47%. Now, if we were a city council or the county commissioners, we could deliberate and say, you know what, let's, let's keep our tax rate exactly the same and allow this growth to give us basically 6.4.7% and more revenue. You do not have that option. Like I said, the tax rates are set for you. And if you look at our tax rate, it's going down 5.88%. So it's nearly a wash, right? Uh, we're not benefiting from this kind of natural growth in the tax base that also creates more demand for services. Uh, and when you think about education funding in Florida in general, there's, there's two main sources. There's state sales tax and there's local school taxes. The sales tax rate remains steady at 6% each year. Uh, the state doesn't roll back the sales tax uh, if the price of goods and services goes up year over year. So that, that helps somewhat. Uh, but this rolling back at a millage rate, uh, what they've done the legislature the past two years, the required local effort has been set to the rollback rate. And the rollback rate is the rate that where you basically lower your tax rate so that you generate the same dollars you had the year before. So the taxable values go up, you lower your millage rate. And what's troubling is the legislature now has for two years, despite recommendations by the State Board of Education, the governor, and the Senate to not roll back the RLE, they've done that. And when they've done that, they've taken over a billion dollars off the table that could normally go into the state budget. And it seems pretty short-sighted because now the state is grappling with a budget shortfall for FY19, where otherwise we could have had a billion dollars in recurring revenue uh, kind of naturally by just maintaining that rate. And it's the EDR that does all the state budget forecasting. They have always assumed in their forecast that that RLE would stay at the, the constant rate and that that would be part of the general revenue stream going forward. So now after two years of this kind of change in state policy, uh, you know, that may force them to even revisit their economic forecasts and take those revenue projections down, creating additional budget surpluses. Uh, these are the rates for Palm Beach County. Uh, you can see when you look at compared to the rollback rate, because we're keeping our discretionary millage and capital millage at the statutory cap of 2.498 mills, and then we have the, the voter-approved quarter mill, 
That results in actually the overall comparison to the rollback rate of a slightly increasing 0.66%. But again, that, that's a pretty nominal increase, and it's a shame because it, it leaves a lot of money off the table. Uh, when you think about $500 million a year that's being taken off the table, Palm Beach County represents about 6.5% of the state, so that's 32.5 million that otherwise could have come into Palm Beach County. And when you look at the budget we presented to you last week, uh, and it's attached to the workshop today, we could have really benefited from another 32.5 million. That would have gone a long way into our employee salary reserve. The current homeowner, uh, we've, and this value is getting a little low, I guess, but at, at 225,000, assuming the 25,000 school district exemption, uh, their taxes will go down $60.00. 20 cents this year you know that's a fairly meager reduction you know about uh, five dollars a month or so there and uh, but again it comes at the expense of you know 32.5 million that could have been in the school district to help serve the kids of Palm Beach County the total budget the budget is getting bigger uh, we have several funds that comprise the budget but our district budget is uh, going to end FY 17 at about 2.5 billion uh, it's growing to almost $2.9 billion next year, but the bulk of that growth is attributed to our capital budget, where we are advancing. We've got now, the, fortunately, the sales tax money coming in, and we've moved some projects up into the FY18 budget, and we'll be doing some borrowing. And uh, so that's really what's driving that increase. The special revenue other, you may, if you don't be too alarmed, you see a $50 million decrease there. That's routine at this time of the year. A lot of our grants kind of come in in the fall and we budget them as they're received, so we expect that to kind of hopefully grow back to the at least FY17 level. So for next steps, uh, after tonight's actions, we do have two agenda items for you. Uh, we would be back September 6th for final adoption. We are closing out the books on FY17 as we speak. Our fiscal year ended June 30th. There's some, we've posted our last payrolls. We're going through paying, you know, make sure we've got all the bills paid from last year, and uh, we're, ex we're expecting our fund balance hopefully to grow. And if you may recall, similar to last year, we made the commitment that whatever additional revenue we could identify between now and final adoption, we would direct into our employee salary reserve. So that, that's our plan of attack again this year. And uh, Ms. Knust and myself will be working with Dr. Bosa. And once we get those final numbers, we'll think we can uh, hopefully have some improvement based on the way things are looking. Uh, but that would be the primarily, the, probably the biggest change you'll see between tentative and final adoption. Uh, Dr. Vosa, with that, uh, that concludes our presentations. We'd be happy to take any questions before uh, we ask the board to vote on the items. Any questions? If not, Dr. Vosa, recommendation on B1. I recommend the board, the school board, adopt the proposed millage levies of 6.7690 mills for fiscal year 2018. The total millage rate is 0.66% greater than the rollback rate and it's made up of 4.2630 mills for required local effort, 0 0.0080 mills for prior period RLE adjustment, 0 0.7480 mills for discretionary operating, 1.5 mills for local capital improvement, and 0 0.2500 mills for additional operating. Is there a motion? Motion by Mrs. Andrews, second by Mrs. Brill. Just a quick question, Ms. Burke. I heard earlier this week that a group of school boards in some of the smaller districts may be a big issue for them next year will deal with the DCD and trying to get everybody to have a minimum allocation of, of one. And so I, this is probably not the time to go in detail, but are you looking at that? What it does for us is that we get above a one allocation and there are some of the small districts that get less than one and this has a potential of, of having another big impact on us. So can you address that? And it, uh, that has our full attention. And Palm Beach County, with the high cost of living we have, and the DCD is the district cost differential. It's based on the Florida Price Level Index. It basically gives us a 4% adjustment to our funding to recognize that it's more expensive to live in Palm Beach County and that 80% of our revenue goes to t employee salaries and benefits. So that DCD adjustment is worth nearly $40 million to our district. And yeah, it's annually and recurring. Annually and recurring. And we actually would argue, Mr. Shaw, that it's too low. Yeah. 
Right. So we, we actually think if you look at Monroe County, I think Broward, Miami-Dade, maybe Sarasota, there's a few counties that are eligible for this. We pay, if I'm not mistaken, our, L, our RLE is significantly higher in terms of amount. Is that correct? Right. So because we have a, a strong property base, we, we support the funding locally here about 70% of the student funding, and we get uh, a smaller relative share of the state money, right? Uh, everyone is getting basically the same amount per student, plus this adjustment for DCD. So yeah, that's been a recurring theme that, you know, this, that Palm Beach County is kind of a donor county. And uh, the DCD was really the, the one mechanism that tried to help differentiate the cost of living across the state. Uh -huh. There are, uh, a, I think it's 50 districts or so that they actually see a negative DCD adjustment. So it's very unpopular with them. Uh, but there's other components of the FEFP that uh, if they're going to talk about revisiting the DCD, they need to look at some other things that are done with the equalization of millage, sparsity adjustments. There's a, there's a fairly long list, and uh, yeah, that's a great concern. We need to be, we'll be, you know, coming back to you to talk about legislative priorities in August, and uh, I think we could, you know, have additional conversation at that point. All right. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Next item. B2. Is B2. I recommend the school board adopt the tentative district summary budget in the amount of $2,876,793,002 for fiscal year 2018. Is there a motion? Motion by Mrs. McQuinn, second by Mrs. Andrews. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call Mrs. Andrews. You know, um, Mr. Burke, it's good for people to know that this money, when you look at this increase, it is from the sales tax. So we have to kind of make sure people know that this is because of this additional monies that we are putting in here. That's true. And, you know, uh, superintendent and our communications chief has done a good job of letting people know that the, the pennies at work and uh, they're starting to see benefits already. I'm trying to let everybody know that Mike Burke is at work as well with this budget. So <laughs> things are good. <laughs> Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 6 0. So, is there a motion to adjourn the uh, special meeting? Motion by Mrs. Andrews, second by Mr. Barbieri. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries.